everybody, welcome to Fender Play Live. Okay. Wait, that didn't sound oh, good. That doesn't sound good at all. What doesn't are you work. trying to do? I don't know. I'm trying to introduce myself. I'm trying to start the show. I got excited for the... Uh, uh, okay. Whatever. You just take a breath. I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Jen Trenny. I'm Matt. <laughs> and this week we're going to talk about tone, and we have one question for you. Are you clean or are you dirty? So we got a lot to talk about when we cover this. So let's get into it. Oh, also remember, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments and we'll try to answer them, okay? So what is clean tone? Well, when it comes to electric guitar, at a minimum, you wanna have a great clean tone and a great dirty tone perhaps to contrast with, but that can mean a lot of things. So before we jump in, let's back up and talk about some of the basics of tone. So what does it mean when we talk about a guitar tone? So the guitar tone is basically just how it sounds, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. And then with a guitar tone can refer to the instrument itself. Right. It can refer to the amps. I'm mm -hmm. pointing to the amp if you can't see. Uh, I'm pointing to one too. <laughs> We're both pointing to yeah. amps. It can uh, it can apply to effects. Ooh. Ooh. And and lots more. Mm -hmm. But remember, tone is very subjective. So what you may like, somebody else may not like. But it's all about experimenting and finding your own voice with that. Yep. So when we say clean tone, we mean through your amp with nothing else. Yep. So I've got a clean tone. You got a clean tone? I sure do. Tone? All right. So let's hear a little clean tone. You want to do a G again? Or sure. Yeah, go for it. Are you too rowdy? I, I feel a little rowdy, but I'm going to try and dial it back the rest <laughs> of the time. I can't make any promises. So. so that's my clean tone. Cool, cool. And oh, this is yeah. mine. So I'm playing a Performer Strat through a Mustang GT100, and all my EQ right now is at noon. So it's just basically leveled out. Mm -hmm. nothing, nothing crazy going on. Um, I've got my volume at 10 and both tone knobs at 10 as well, and I'm on the neck pickup. So that is my setup. What you got? I well, you got something good happening. I got over there. something. I also have a, an American Performer Strat. Um, I'm also set up on the neck position pickup. We both have single coil pickups, but I have a different type of an amplifier. This is a tube amplifier. This is a Blues Junior amplifier. So, and I, my settings are well now they are <laughs> <laughs> at noon. And so on this amplifier, this is the type of sound I'm getting. So a fairly clean tone, but but a different sound than than what you're getting. A little bit different, little yeah. Bit. Because we you've got you've got the humbucker back there. Mm -hmm. Even oh. though we're both on single coils right mm -hmm. now with the neck pickup, but you have some options that uh, we'll I don't. But we're gonna talk about that. We'll we're gonna talk about that right now, no. guys. No. Sorry, I got excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what affects your guitar tone? Well, lots of things. Number one, just what's your guitar made out of? What types of materials? So just the body. Um, Fender uses generally ash or alder uh, to build the bodies on their electric guitars. With acoustics, of course, the type of wood can make a huge difference. Um, but with electric guitars, there are also a ton of other things that can affect your tone. Mm -hmm. So the construction of the guitar, uh, the quality of the parts, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the pickup types. I mean, for a really broad demonstration, we could talk about single coil versus humbucking pickups. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the bridge. Take, Take it to the, the bridge. bridge. I knew it. We've been spending too much time together, too much time in this room. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you should be. I am. I am. <laughs> All right, so now we're both on our, our bridge pickups. I've got a single coil here. Yeah. And you've got humbuckers. Humbuckering pickup. So give me, give me a little something. Okay, so like an A chord. <laughs> Nice. I had to. I yeah. Oh, I thought yeah. it was special. It is special. <laughs> it is special. <laughs> but you can hear with my clean tone that it's just a little bit brighter. It cuts through just a touch more. Mm -hmm. And this is a little. I'm, I'm a little dirty here already. We gotta. I gotta dial that can't back. Help that preamble. <laughs> he, can't. he tries. We try to help him. Is that better? <laughs> yeah. Considering we're talking about clean tone, that would be helpful for this show. <laughs> what? Okay, okay, okay. How about this? Sorry, guys. Sorry about Matt. But it, it's also. But isn't it also how I'm striking the strings? Mm -hmm. I'm having fun. I'm excited, so I'm hitting yep. the strings kind of hard. Yep. So it's 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 distorting a little bit. But if I 
Mm -hmm. Dial it back a little bit, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Because there's so much that we can do, right? Just with how we hit the strings. But let's go back to pickups, I think. Okay, going back to pickups. I'm getting some. I'm getting my picks ready. But go. Perry's yelling at us. We're doing Wait. something wrong already. What? 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 Do you want? We had a question. Oh, we had oh. a question. Oh. So, Mark. so <laughs> I can't read. Since you're both on the neck pickups, is the difference in sound in the amps? That's generally, that's a great question. That's, that's an amazing question. Generally what we're trying to demonstrate here because we have essentially the same guitar, particularly when we're on the neck position pickup. So all the difference that you're going to hear um, is in the amp. So in I got amp, a tube yep. amp. Uh, Jen's got a modeling amp. Yep. Solid state. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you're gonna get a very a much a warmer, richer tone mm -hmm. um, from the Blues Junior. Yeah. And uh, this is just a little more straightforward. I would say, I, not, not in a bad way, but it kind of has a little bit of a deader sound. Mm -hmm. Doesn't bounce around as much, yeah. which can be really yeah. cool when you're adding in like a ton of effects. Right. Because that can really help, which we're gonna talk about later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so the other thing that Was can affect Go ahead. Is string gauge yes. and strings, because you can have flat wound. Mm -hmm. You can have what we usually have, right? Right. Um, or depending on how thick or thin they are, mm -hmm. thicker strings, fatter thicker sound. Thicker tone, yeah. Thicker tone? Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> thinner strings? <laughs> like a little brighter, a little snappier? Mm -hmm. And then one thing that was really important um, is your pick. Right? You were set up for that demo from before we this. started the show. Look at this. I was set up. I was prepared. Look at this. Let me just do this. this. my pick fan. Thank you. Thank well you. Thank done. you, guys. I prepared three picks that I found in a box. <laughs> 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 so I've got, a, I've got a Fender Thin Pick here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to play something different. Right? Yep. OK. This is a medium pick. And then we have a one millimeter pick. So if we go back to that thin pick, can you hear the difference? It's subtle. It's very subtle, but the, the thin pick just makes everything just a little more crispy. Yeah. Just a little bit crispy, uh, where the uh, thicker pick and the medium pick it has a lower, rounder sound. Yeah. So I know a lot of people and I'm sure you experience this with students too. They're mm -hmm. just like, I just like the feel of the pick. Like, yeah. I don't want to change picks because I just like the feel of it. And you go, but does it sound good, right? Because if you have a bright guitar with thinner strings yeah. on a single coil on the bridge and then you're playing with a thin pick, chances are it's going to be super, super bright. Mm -hmm. Which if that's your vibe, cool. But you might want to think about rounding out the sound a little more with different types of strings or picks. Absolutely. Have you ever had a student come in and they're playing with a pick that's about this thick? Yes. And all you hear is the pick clacking on the strings yeah. even through yeah. the amplifier. I love this yeah. pick. I'm, I, I love, love this it, pick. Yeah, yeah, totally. And you're like, uh, let's, let's just experiment just for this week. Yeah. So yeah, experiment with the sound of picks. And I usually recommend to record yourself playing with mm -hmm. a pick and then with a different pick and record yourself and listen back to hear how it sounds, okay? Very cool idea. So Perry's telling me to stop talking, so Matt, take <laughs> over. <laughs> I, some, my guitar went out of tune, you, you, you talk. So another thing to consider, uh, besides the amp, your amp choice is EQ or equalization. So our guitars will usually have a tone knob. So if I'm, I'm on my neck position pickup, I can, I can change my tone just like that. Whoa. <laughs> but also on the Whoa. amplifier. <laughs> well, I gotta, like, this, tone is a very exciting thing, yes, by the way. Yes, I know, I know. <laughs> Which also changes the EQ, but let's play a little, let's play a little clean tone. So on Fender Play, we've got, we've got hundreds and hundreds of guitar lessons. We've got songs that, that demonstrate great clean tone. We've got songs that demonstrate great dirty tone, but we're talking clean, so funk is a great place to start. So we've got Play That Funky Music by Wild Cherry. So no frills here, just clean, no reverb, no nothing. <laughs> <laughs> OK, 
Okay, that's not in the song. Yes, thanks. Clap, clap for us. Thank you. Yes. For yes. Inappropriate. Clap, clap, clap. We prepped that for, yeah. just for you guys. Is that inappropriate guitar chord endings? Yes. But it's a very pretty chord. It is a very pretty chord. Thank you. All right, let's get into, now this is your section. Oh, right. Dirty tone. <laughs> get some dirt on that tone. Okay, so we talk clean. Let's talk dirty. So a dirty tone usually means adding a distortion or breaking up and distorting your clean tone. There's several different types. So let's dive into what the term means. So a lot of people use the term distortion to cover like all of the layers or the stages of gain, I guess, that we could, we could call it, right? Mm -hmm. When you initially start to break up the sound, which I'll talk about in a second, I've got a wonderful prop to demonstrate this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we can overdrive an amplifier in a traditional setting. So a tube amplifier, like this Blues Junior, has these vacuum tubes. Yes, I brought my Blues yes. Junior from home. Give it up for Matt for bringing his Blues Junior from home and taking the back off. Yeah. This is also going to be my Halloween costume. Okay. How do I look? Okay, put that down. Okay, put it sorry. down. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So, and I get told to, to wrap it up and he, this is his costume. <laughs> Sorry. A <laughs> um, couple different tubes here. We've got two larger tubes. These are our power tubes. On an amp like a Blues Junior, I've got two volume knobs. I've got a master volume control. So the larger power amp tubes, in this case, they're EL84s. Um, I can turn that up and that's just going to make the amp louder. Mm -hmm. It's not going to change the tone as much. Mm -hmm. Um, however, I have another volume control which controls the three smaller tubes, the preamp tubes, generally 12AX7s on these newer amps, and I can turn the volume knob up on this and really, as we say, overdrive those tubes and cause the sound to break up. So now let me put down my Halloween costume. No, oh my God. <laughs> I can Don't ever say that again. It. Don't ever say that that's your Halloween costume again. <laughs> what? <laughs> So if I got, I've got my little strat here, I'm on the neck position. Now, and I've got my preamp volume, I actually turned it down so that the, the actual tone was cleaner. Now, if I turn up the, the preamp volume on this amplifier, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it up to about here. It's going to raise the volume a little bit, but you're going to hear it break up a little. more sustain, I can get like a bluesier tone. Yeah. So just a great way, and in the early days of electric guitar, you're, really your only option was to drive your tube amp. And before we had master volumes, you would just turn the volume up and drive everybody out yeah. of the room. Yeah, <laughs> just crank it. <laughs> just crank it. Soaring, saturated <laughs> <laughs> tone. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Those were the good old days. Ooh, yeah. Just get back there. You whippersnappers. <laughs> <laughs> so some great, some great examples of you know classic overdrive. So all right now by Free or Johnny Be Good. We have these lessons on Fender Play. Oh, you said you wouldn't do that. I can't help you it. You said you wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let, let's let's get into the nuances okay. of the the distortion and the overdrive because distortion it's slightly different from overdrive and mm -hmm. adds even more saturation, yep. right, and uh, a broken up sound. Mm -hmm. So it was actually discovered by using um, from a broken speaker cone, right? right. You want to tell the story. You like sure. the story. Well, of course I like the story. You like everything. So, Is there so, something you don't like? Yeah. Okay. I don't like <laughs> unicorns. Okay. I said oh. it. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> I love unicorn. We're going to get some unicorn hate on this channel. Oh, no. <laughs> Guys, sorry, I'm man. sorry. I have a five-year-old. We love unicorns mm, together. Man. She's got a giant pink one. All right, anyway. Um, <laughs> so if we go to the kinks, Dave Davies, the story is, and I, I wasn't there, so I can't back it up. Um, <laughs> Dave Davies wanted, was in the studio trying to get you know, just a cooler, different sound, and he apparently took a knife and he slashed his speaker cone. So the paper, when you're playing, causes the air to move and, and the little rips in the paper started to get a tearing sound to break it up some more. So we, can, we can't do that. I'm not going to slash a speaker cone, but I, we do have some lovely petals. Yes, we have this uh, Santa Ana Overdrive here. Mm -hmm. So another way to get it, just through a pedal. Oh, I need a little more level. Yeah. And so 
just to give you an example of that of, of the difference we Now I'm just loud. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you, Ron. Now you're just loud. Sorry, Ron. <laughs> so Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm, I, I can't I keep putting this guitar down. We're not doing that. So let's do um, let's do a little bit of a distorted tone sure. right now. Shall we do that? Yeah. Hello? And then. Hello. So if we do a little Cowboys from Hell. Oh, let me go on that uh, bridge position humbucking pickup. Yes. Part. Thank you so Excellent much. Excellent pedaling there. Thank you there. so much. Thank you. So awesome. Pedaling. 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 <laughs> hey. Oh, shnikes. That's All right. good. And of course, we do have that Cowboys from Hell on Fender Play, the guitar lesson, so check yep. it out. So a little distortion for it, more breakup and more, uh oh, what do you have here? What do we have here? We have the pelt fuzz. Uh, so now we're super broken up. <laughs> saturated. I've got sustain. Like I can do this. Shall I continue? I'm getting the sign that perhaps not. <laughs> I take that as a no. <laughs> So let's recap a little so bit. Let's so let's recap. Okay, so we got fuzz. And keep in mind, we've got these uh, cool pedals here, but everything is EQ'd pretty much center. We're giving you the basic idea of what right. fuzz and overdrive and distortion are, but you have so many options with tweaking the sound and mm -hmm. making it a nuanced thing. But we're just, we're just giving you the idea for how each sounds and uh, how they compare to each other. So let's start with the clean. Give me clean. So clean. Give me a riff on the clean. Oh, yeah. Okay, now we're gonna overdrive it a little bit. No, for reals. <laughs> yeah, okay, distortion. And then full on. Yeah. That's all for you. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna keep you on the overdrive. Okay, thank you, <laughs> thank you. So we've covered some ba uh, some basics of clean and dirty. Um, so which is the right tone for you? Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for you to tell us. So clean tends to be preferred in jazz, but you can also use it in rock. Uh, Jimmy Nolan, mm -hmm. very clean, right? Mm -hmm. Mark Knopfler, uh, Jerry Garcia, Pat Metheny. And remember, um, when we talk about the clean tone, we're not talking about super clean like this, no reverb, no delay, no nothing. We're just saying that they really utilize that foundation yeah. of clean. So mm -hmm. obviously it's not just clean, but they're known for Nice, nice, nice and sparkly. There you go. Straight ahead. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I think sparkly is a fine descriptive word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I too am sparkly. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, in distortion, we could talk about examples from you know blues music, rock, metal, but even country guitar players will add a little bit of dirt to their tone for edit, you know, to kind of punch through the mix. Yeah. Um, and also for further sustain when they're playing their leads. Yep. Um, Clean tends, uh, tends to mean more clearer sounds. Right. Um, but you can also use it to um, pop above the rest of the music sure. because I don't have any. I mean, that just cuts right through, especially right. you got the bass going, you mm -hmm. know, um, and all these lower tones happening. That's going to slice white right through your recording. Yeah, absolutely. Especially yeah, for funk when you're when you're just so much part of the percussion. Yeah, section. It's, totally. It's really important to pop through and not kind of muddy it. But man, for for metal and rock, that little distortion. <laughs> I almost got a pinch harmonic there. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> but you know what's super fun? So tell me. What if we try, like, we mix it up a little bit. You play something clean. Okay. I'll play something dirty. Let's see Great. what happens. Just play something dirty. Yeah. So what voice is that? <laughs> I, I got nothing. I got nothing. I got nothing. All right, we're going to go back to our 
little yeah. funky. Fun yeah, you got funky? that, play that funky music. Classic riff, sounds great. Let's mash it up. I got cowboys from hell. <laughs> Courtesy of Matt Lake, everybody. <laughs> I'm also an arranger in my free time. Oh, <laughs> call me. <laughs> call me for work. <laughs> also, right, go do it. <laughs> well, there's some tunes that, that actually utilize clean and dirty tones. That's so right. At the end of level five in our rock path, we, we end it with Ziggy Stardust, mm -hmm. which is a great. So if you're going from being a beginning guitar player level one, you work your way through level five and you're branching off, you're getting arpeggio picking and some faster movements. So that's a tune that utilizes some great clean tones and dirty tones. Maybe yeah. we can demonstrate a little bit of it. Was, was Ziggy Stardust when David Bowie was a redhead? Is that, I, is that the era? I believe so. Is that the era? It's when he... When, Nobody, they're not even listening. It's when, it's when he was yes. Ziggy Stardust. Yeah, he just had the hey. redhead. He was a redhead. Yeah, yeah. What hey. am I doing? That one. Oh. you can mix and match yeah. and you want to mix and match right yeah. you want you want the contrast you want the pull of the clean to and the and the and the distortion that just you know knocks you in your face like singes your eyebrows Whoa. <laughs> right? the clean like pokes you in the <laughs> eye and then the distorted singes your eyebrows yeah <laughs> like, i love it <laughs> you're welcome <Yeah. laughs> you're welcome fender <laughs> you know something that you were mentioning earlier that i thought was really great is how, how cool it is to have those two options. A lot of great recordings, one of the guitar players maybe, or one of just the tracks could be really clean. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it has its own place in the mix. And then another guitar, perhaps it's just the lead line or the solo comes in. Yeah, and, yeah. And it has a dirtier, more saturated, sustained tone. And they live in their own place, you know, a, you know up, up with, you know, at least the foundation of drums, bass, and maybe keyboards or, or perhaps other instruments. But it... They live in their own place, and, it, and, it, and it's great. When two guitars have the exact same sound, it can, I think, it, what did you, how did you put it? You put it. And they phase each other out. Yeah. There isn't, there, there, there isn't any depth to mm -hmm. it, you know? So you want to make sure that when you're um, creating your tones, a little bit of distortion can go a long way. Yep. And it can make a big difference when you've got a clean tone mm -hmm. and then a distorted tone. But also go crazy. Turn those knobs. See what see what comes out. Get all different kinds of pedals and just just see what you like. Like don't be afraid, but also know for the real world, maybe just a maybe a hint of things mm -hmm. can go a long way, right? Absolutely. Especially when you're recording. You don't need to go totally insane on the well. Maybe well, you insane. want to go insane. I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now let's get to homework, my favorite part yes. of this. I love assigning homework. Uh, each week we assign homework to the audience, and you post your homework in the comments. So for beginners, we'd love to hear you play an open chord with your favorite tone. Mm -hmm. So just something simple. Yeah. That's my clean tone. What do you got? Oh, wait. Yeah. Give, me, oh, give me something. Yeah. OK. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Derek. <laughs> well done. Thank you, sir. Um, for intermediate, play a riff with either a dirty or clean tone. Mm-hmm. Or. I'm trying to find your notes. They, they don't exist. They only exist here. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I just got to keep practicing. You keep practicing. Uh, and then for the blow our minds, play either a lead solo with a dirty or clean tone. So just go for it. It'd yeah. be cool if you did it with both so you could see, like, oh, this is what it sounds like clean. This is what it sounds like dirty. Yeah. Just a suggestion. I'm not your mom. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. Or your dad. <laughs> but it's a good one. I like that, too. <laughs> you take over. Okay. I'm going to think... stop talking about being people's parents. I think it is giveaway time. Everyone. Giveaway time!
Every week, we give away a free piece of gear to a Fetter Play user just for watching a single lesson. So let's get into this week's winner, and let's just start with a drum roll. <laughs> this week's winner is Red T. Congratulations. So remember, the more videos you watch, the more chances to win. Literally, all you guys got to do is watch a video. But you do, do the that. lesson. I mean, watch the video. Do the lesson. Come watch on. the video. You're Come on. Good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now we're on to some questions. Yes. Yes. OK, ooh, James says, which players do you think have the best tones? <laughs> oh, man. We're going to get in trouble no matter what we say. Yeah. But go your favorite tone. We're going to talk oh, about God. personal preferences. Oh, God. That's... These are not facts. These are opinions. That's, that's hard. <laughs> you go first. I mean, David Gilmore. Yeah, David Gilmore. David Gilmore for me and Lindsey Buckingham. Man, so right on the money. That's it. My God. That's it. I mean, David Gilmore, somebody described it as like swimming through milk, which is really appealing to me. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're on your own. <laughs> but I feel like David Gilmore is tough. <laughs> All right, I guess I'm the only one. Do you have one or not? <laughs> I'm just trying, you know, it depends It depends on the mood, you know. Okay, jazz. This, this morning I was listening to, to Wes Montgomery and yeah. just really digging on his tone, just the, that he got with the sound of his thumb and yep. just, just really finite vibrato. Makes me so happy. Yep. But then I could listen to Brad Paisley and be equally happy for different reasons. Yeah. So, hmm. Okay, Stacy yes. asks, is the bass supposed to match the guitar distortion? It can. it can. It definitely can. When you get into metal, there are mm -hmm. definitely bass parts that crank up the distortion, and it's really, really cool. So yeah. um, I would say use it sparingly if you're going to do it. Because again, you want the notes or the riff, especially in metal, you want it to be clean. You want to be able to hear what they're talking about. Yeah. Right, or what they're talking about, what they're trying to say <laughs> in the motif. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, I'd go for it. I'm trying to think. Uh, doesn't Muse do it in mm -hmm. what is that song? I know what you're Hysteria. talking about. Hysteria. There you go. Yeah. Fuzz bass Fuzz. right at the top all through the song, and it's killer. Yeah. And they're not apologizing to anybody. They don't apologize like I do for everything. No, me either. That I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> so go for it if you're playing the bass in the... Mood suits you. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's time for shout outs. Shout outs, shout yes. it out, Matt. So Ch Tanchira finished both the rock and the pop paths and is already on to the blues yeah. path. Great job, that's amazing. Yeah. Woo! There's always something new to learn. Yep, totally. Okay. And Marie Ellen uh, uploaded her first video of her playing and singing and it sounds great. Yes. Thank you for sharing with everybody. Really yes. Appreciate it. Takes a lot, a lot, a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage to learn something new, yep. especially when you're an adult yep. and you're not being forced to, and it takes a lot of courage to post something. So we're really proud of you guys when you post um, and put yourself out there and are available for feedback because mm -hmm. a lot of people won't do that. Yeah. It's scary, and you're doing it to be better guitar players, and that's rad. It is. It, you know, it's, a, it's a performance component, but it's also sharing and encouraging the other members of our uh, play community, which is great to see. Mm -hmm. Um, what's new on Fender Play? Every week we have new updates. So this week uh, we've been shooting uh, guitar content and uh, also some bass lessons recently, but we've shot some uke new ukulele lessons. Mm -hmm. So Stand By Me is a new lesson. Oh, so if okay. I've got any of my our euchres up there, we can play Stand By Me. Of course, we can play that on our guitars too. We do have a guitar lesson of it with distortion. No. Yes. Do you have it with distortion? No. No, but I have it right now with distortion. Go, do it. <laughs> where you'll learn to just tune Matt out. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go now. We've all, <laughs> we've all learned that point. Fair enough, fair just enough. Just go to your happy place. <laughs> and you say, oh, Matt's just playing. Matt's just playing. He'll stop eventually. He'll stop eventually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, this new on Fender Play, we've uh, shot some uh, alternate tuning lessons to support some of our songs. We've got a bunch of whole, a whole bunch of Rolling Stones tunes in the pipeline. So we've got Open G alternate tuning, a course on that. So check that out if that's something that's interesting to you. Yep, and that's it, right? Are that's we done? It. We're Are done. We done? 
Yeah. Oh my goodness, we're done. So thank you everybody for stopping by and watching. Tune in Wednesday at five for our next episode and keep practicing and we will see you next time. G chord, everybody. Yeah.